Hello everyone, and welcome back. Today we're going to be continuing our exploration of the R programming language, and we're going to be discussing how to create your own functions. Creating your own functions is definitely one of the more powerful techniques that you can have uh, in your arsenal of tools in any coding language, especially if you find yourself repeating the same exact thing over and over again, especially for a complex task, or you have a really, really large project that probably would be a little bit more um, easier to read or compile if you broke it up into littler pieces. So to demonstrate, I'm just gonna be using this little CSV file that I've imported, but there's nothing special about it. You can literally use any CSV file, CSV file that you have. Let's assume that you're interested in calculating the mean of one of the variables in this particular data set. For example, what if I want to find the mean of the ages of all individuals in this particular thing, then I can get 28.59 approximately years old. Now that's gonna be the arithmetic mean, but let's assume that you want to find the geometric mean of that object. Object. Well, the geometric mean of that object, if you work around with the algebra, can be found by doing e to the power of the mean of the natural logarithm of that data set, and that's going to give you the geometric mean, which is approximately equal to 28 years old. But let's assume that I want to create a function, for example, called gmean, where I just feed it my data set, and it just calculates that geometric mean for me in a very nice way because this equation can be very intimidating especially to those who are not used to coding or don't like a lot of mathematical formulas. So how can we create our own function called gmean that calculates this geometric mean structure? So I'm actually going to keep that line there because at the moment it does not run at all because it cannot function find this function gmean. So we need to create it. So in order to create a function, all you have to do is firstly uh, call or create the name that you want to name the function. And then we're going to do gmean is going to be equal to a function of the variables that you're going to have. So we're only going to be feeding it a vector and let's call that arbitrary vector s open close braces and inside this function all you have to do if it is a single line calculation you can just type that actual calculation so again exp mean log of that data set and that's going to create that function for you and you can just run this first line and that'll create this function and store it inside of your r environment Right? So now this function gmean should exist, and if I run this line now, now it actually calculates the geometric mean for you. Now you can calculate the geometric mean of any data set um, in an effortless manner. For example, I can do the geometric mean of the amount of hours worked um, for all of these uh, participants in this company, and that's going to give me approximately 23.8 hours um, per day or per week. Right? So that's how you can create your own little functions. Now this function is very, very basic, um, but if you get a longer and longer code, you might have several different variables um, working inside of this function. So which one do you want this function to return? So let's now modify this function just a tad bit, um, just for clarity. Um, and let's assume that this value that we're going to return to the user is gonna be called GM. So if you want to return that particular value, all you have to do is just do return and then GM and it will return that particular value for you. If you know the Python programming language, the functions require you to have this line here, else it in general won't run unless you have a couple modifications turned on. So if we just give that a new run, um, it will still display the same exact values, but this is a little bit more cleaner or more proper in terms of its implementation. All right, so now let's actually go ahead and create a more larger function that has several variables. Um, and let's use an example, for example, simple linear regression, um, which a lot of you probably already know. And let's actually create a function that does a lot of our typical analysis things. So the function that I want to calculate or create is going to be called my SLR, my simple linear regression function. And this is going to be a function of two variables x and y and x and y are both going to be vectors right so you're going to go out and ask a bunch of people let's say n of them you know how old are you how tall are you and then you're going to see if there exists a linear relationship um, between their age and their height for example so age can be x and height can be y okay 
So um, the amount of values in x and y should be the same. If they're not the same, um, then we need to return an error uh, to the user, be like, hey, you're using this function wrong. You know, maybe you should check your x and y vectors, make sure they're the same length. So if the length of x does not equal to, so that's going to be exclamation mark equals, that's not equal to the length of y, then we need to tell the user, hey, you know, you can't do this, right? So in order to return an error and just stop the function, then you're going to do stop and then do the number of predictors x and response y values must equal one another or you could literally tell them anything you want you know of course be nice to people when they don't use your functions correctly maybe they don't know okay so that's going to give us that particular object and let's actually go ahead and create this function and do a little simulation here right so let's create a vector x let's do c12 and let's do another vector y and that's going to be c123 actually let's do 1 9 10 okay and let's do my slr xy and give that a run and notice that it says oh the number of predictors x and y must be equal to one another because obviously one has two and one has three so if we do just one two three here and then rerun those lines now it runs without any errors so so far everything is working properly now let's add a bunch of things that a lot of people usually do calculate when it comes to simple linear regression the first is probably going to be the correlation and also the coefficient of determination aka the r and r squared values so my core is going to be the correlation so this is going to be the correlation of x and y and then my coefficient of determination this is just going to be my core squared and is also going to be the length of x, which is also the length of y, which is sort of forced here by this little if statement. Um, let's also calculate the sum of squared residuals. Um, there are several ways to do this, but you can do, for example, the variance of the y components uh, times m minus 1. So times n minus 1. And then times 1 minus the r squared value or the my coefficient of determination. And then we can do the slope of the line of best fit, so it's going to be the correlation, so my core times SDY over SDX, and then the intercept will be the mean of Y minus M times the mean of X, and make sure that everything is defined um, before you use it, else it's going to break, and that's going to be, you know, bad signs. Um, let's also calculate our predicted values, aka your y hat values. So y hat is going to be a vector. Um, that's going to be m times x plus b. So m is a number, b is a m is a number, b is a number, and x is a vector. So y hat will be a vector of the predicted values. And you could also calculate your sum of squared residuals via this y hat vector as well, um, because you could do um, SSR is equal to the sum of the squared residuals, which is going to be equal to your y minus y hat. Um, the quantity squared and that's actually going to be an alternative representation for your SSR if that's more trivial um, but this calculation is also equivalent and will give you the same exact answer okay um, but this is a little bit more useful for multiple linear regression if you ever plan to extend it a little bit later on so that gives us our predicted values um, and also let's assume that maybe our user might want to plot or they might not want to plot we don't know so let's actually change the inputs of our function. Let's go back up here to our inputs. Notice we have x, y, and let's assume that we want to display or have a, fun a function call of whether we want to display yes or no, right? So let's default it to false. So by default, it will not plot anything. So if display is equal to true, then what we're actually going to do is plot x, y, and that's going to create our scatter plot in this lower right hand corner as usual. And that's pretty much it. At least that's the basics of simple linear regression. So now let's create a list of all of these objects. So my list is going to be a vector of all of the things that we plan to return. So the first thing that we're going to display is the r value. So this is the uh, my correlation. So R value is actually going to be the name of the class that you actually associate 
to your particular variable. For example, in the My Data Set, notice that we have first name, last name, age, prior experience, job rank, and several other things here. So that's what this thing here in quotes is. And again, that is case sensitive. And this object here is the variable that you're going to return if that object class is called for that particular MySLR object, right? Because this my MSL, my SLR function is going to return a bunch of things. So this function is actually returning an object, which is of the form of a list, which has several things in it. And the names of those things in it are classes, and those classes take values, right? So uh, the correlation is the first thing that you could return. You could also return the R2 or R squared value. And this is going to be equal to my COD or my COR go. All right, so let's bring that back and then comma. I like doing it uh, line by line because at least to me, it's a little bit easier to read, but it's not necessary. So SSR is going to be returned to sum of squared residuals. The slope will be returned to as M, the intercept, will be returned to as b, so equals b, and then comma, and then predicted values, which is going to be a vector, is going to be returned as y hat. And then once we're going, we're just going to return my list, all of them at the same exact time. Right. So once we have that, let's clean things up just a tad bit, and let's just rerun this mySLR function. Hopefully there's no bugs. Um, call x, call y, and then if you run my SLR without saving it in anything, notice it's going to return your R value, R squared value, SSR, slope, intercept, and y hat values. Now, let's assume that you might not want to use all of them and you want to just pick and choose. So what we're going to do is we're going to define m as the list that my, MS, my SLR returns. Now, that's going to be stored inside of our environment. And inside of this M object, you have all of your values for which you can access at any time. For example, the R squared value can be do M dollar sign, then R2 value. That's going to give us your R squared value. And then, for example, your SSR for that model um, is 8.16. You can do your slope, your intercept. You can do anything you want. Um, and if you ever want to change or return anything extra, just go up here to your list, um, add, rerun your function, and then recall it. Right? So that's how you can create your own functions. Now, notice that maybe this I never want to change, and I sort of want to put this on the side in a separate environment. For example, let's assume that I want to create my own script. Let's assume I just want to cut this and put it somewhere else. For example, let's go over here and create a new R script, and let's actually copy and paste that function that I've created. And then I'm going to save this as my SLR. Once you have that saved, if it is already saved appropriately, for example, you should see the name of my SLR next to your actual object. And if you go to your files, then you should see your function listed there in your current working directory. Right? So let's actually go ahead and clean all of these things out. Let's clear our environment. Um, I still want to use the same exact data set, let's assume. Um, and let's assume we want to use the same exact CSV file. So let's bring that back in. Let's do that as our X. Let's do that as our Y. Actually, let's make this a little bit more interesting. Let's assume X is equal to my data. Let's assume age is on the horizontal and Y is going to be equal to my data. Let's do efficiency factor observed as our Y variable. And let's assume that we want to create a model using that my MSR, my SLR function. So if we do my SLR function of X and Y, and we run that, and it's like, oh, I can't find my function. But I can't run it inside the script because it doesn't exist in the script. But I see it here in my working directory. So if you want to bring that in to your current environment, all you have to do is like source and then my SLR.R. This is almost like libraries, like ggplot2, where you sort of library or source it into your current environment. Right. So if it cannot find that, of course, make sure that your working directory is set and it should be dot R because it is definitely case sensitive. So let's figure out what's going on here. Ah, 
I see what was going on. So if you ever see that it's okay, oh, my MSLR is right here, but it's not sort of coming up, make sure you click this little blue widget and make sure you have that as your working directory. So you click set as working directory, and then for example, do source, then you should see it come up inside of your functions. That's sometimes something that comes up. So we have our X, we have our Y, and then if we give this run, now it actually works, right? So in here, notice they have our R value, R square value, SSR slope, intercept, and Y hat. Now do remember that we did have an option to display our scatter plot if we wanted. So if we do M is equal to my SLR and then X, Y, and let's actually change our display equals to true. Now it's actually going to generate that scatter plot for us. And of course you can do like a ggplot object command inside of your function that we wrote over here. All you have to do is just change that little line of code and then you can make your graph a little bit more fancier than the default one shown here. Right? But with those little tools, you can literally create any type of function that you want, um, no matter how complex. And you can um, parse that across several um, sub R files if that makes coding a little bit more easier for you. So I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you in the next one. Take care.